blessing on the seven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in the now and the hour of our death. Amen. Please be seated. Words from today's Gospel. Ashadenta Jesu in the Viculum. Jesus got into the boat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. In today's Gospel, spiritual writers look upon the boat as symbolizing the soul of the individual person, the individual soul. And the tempests in the Gospel represent the trials that the soul has to undergo in this life. So if the boat represents the soul, then the Lord on the boat represents his presence in our souls. And so with this image, I'd like to speak about devotion to the presence of God. So the practice of the presence of God consists in recalling as frequently as possible God present in all places, especially in the depth of the just soul, those who are in the state of grace, and consequently doing all things in the sight of of God. So it's recalling as frequently as possible God's presence in all places, particularly in those who are in the state of grace, and doing all things in sight. So the sacred scripture stresses the importance and the sanctifying effect of this of the being in the presence of God. So when we look at Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. We see God speaks to Abraham and he says these words to him, Walk in my presence and be blameless. Walk in my presence and be blameless. One follows the other. If we are convinced that God is present, then we are going to be blameless. We're going to avoid sin as much as possible. If we, all, if we are fully convinced that God is present to us, then we're going, we're, basically we're not going to sin. We're going to be blameless, as the Lord says in, in Holy Scriptures. Walk in my presence and be blameless. So the question is, how is God present to us? How the question that a child would ask you is, where is God? The simple answer is God is everywhere, but He's He's present in five distinct ways. And I'd like to establish this in order to uh, move on to what how to practice this devotion. So God is present everywhere, but He's present in five distinct ways. Firstly, in His immensity, God is through His power through his essence, for his presence, he's, he's everywhere. Secondly, by his indwelling in the soul. So we're in a state of grace. God, the blessed trinity, is in our souls. Thirdly, in his sacramental presence, he's present in the tabernacle, as we know, his true presence. Fourthly, in his hypersonic union with, with the person of Christ. And fifthly, in his manifestation in heaven with the saints and angels. So the first is his immensity. And this signifies that God is present everywhere by His essence, by His presence and His power. So by His essence, His being gives, by, by the very being He, and by we say, God is diffusive of, of Himself, God is diffusive of itself. So by His very being, He created creation, and that's by, by His essence. And not only creates it, He keeps it in existence. The minute that God forgets about you is the minute you disappear. So the reason why we still exist is that God has, through his essence, he holds us up in existence. He is present by, and according to his immensity, by his presence, in that nothing escapes his view. God sees everything from the corners of, of the universe, to the corners of the galaxy, to what, what's happening in, in Saturn. We don't know what's there. God knows. He sees it. To... Um, creation and to what's in our heart. He, he doesn't. You don't know what's in my heart or what I'm thinking in my heart, but God does. I don't know what God's thinking in your heart, but God does. He knows and He sees it by His presence. Thirdly, this is got to do under the umbrella of God's immensity by His power. God, by a word, created everything, and God, by another word, could annihilate everything. He can, and He has the power to do so. Um, but he doesn't, obviously, because he, he loves us and he wants us to, to save a soul. But this demonstrates God's power throughout creation. How does the how does the, the how do the planets move around? Obviously, it's under the guidance of God's power. Obviously, it's through the angels. But um, we see uh, the power of 
of the winds, particularly in, this, uh, in the seas. We see this image in today's gospel, but um, obviously we've seen recently this how the power of a volcano in, in Tonga, for example, we see the immense power that has, that's not even a fraction of God's power over the universe. That's the first we want presence of God, a distinct presence of God. The second is his indwelling in the soul. When we are baptized and brought into um, in union with, with, with the church, with Christ, God enters the soul and he dwells in our soul. So those who are in the state of grace, the blessed trinity dwells in your soul. And so through grace, the flowing of grace, and particularly through the appropriation of the Holy Ghost into our soul, well, well, it's appropriate to the Holy Ghost, but it's a trinity that dwells in our soul. We receive God living, living there, not only as a friend, but also as a father, enabling us to share, to participate, as St. Peter says, in divine life. The third presence is the blessed sacrament, the sacramental presence. Presence, as we all know, Lord is there, present in the Blessed Sacrament, and at the Holy Mass, He's present in the in the in the body and blood, the host and, and the wine. He becomes present under after the consecration. The fourth is God's personal and hypostatic presence to proper, that's proper to Christ. So you have Christ, and and the reason why God is true God and true man is that God comes and subsists in the person of the Word. So the blessed second person, the Blessed Trinity comes in, on, into the humanity of Christ and subsists in the person of the Word. The fifth is God's presence by His manifestation, which signifies what is proper to Him in heaven. So in heaven, God is present and He manifests Himself um, as much as He wants to manifest Himself to those, to those in heaven, the saints and the angels. And we should be aware of this only when we make it to heaven, God willing, and we see Him through what is called a beatific vision. So these five types, the, the two that really affect us and in the practice of the uh, devotion of the presence of God is the, are the first two, the immensity of God, where he's everywhere through his power, through his essence, through his presence, and also the second one, the indwelling of God in the state of those in the state of grace. The first is found in all souls and under all conditions, even those who are in a state of mortal sin. So God is still there, even if you are in a mortal, uh, state of mortal sin, because obviously he's there by his immensity, for, by, through his, his power, his essence, and his presence. But also God is present in the soul, or the word is called indwelling, in the soul of the just. And I'd just like to take a, like a side note. The word indwelling is, is used, or was, is, was used in the Old Testament to signify God present in the temple. Uh, and so the, the same signification, same word is used for God present in the soul. So God, the whole blessed trinity, when he's in the soul, he, he dwells in the soul as, as opposed to being present in the soul to make a distinction between the two. So how do we practice it? How do we practice the presence of God? We established that God is present everywhere, of course, but we, we also established that he's, he's there in distinct, in distinct manner. Now, how do we practice this too? There's ex exterior representation and interior recollection, and there's other means as well. But these are the main two. So the, kind, the first consists of a kind of exterior representation by which we visualize God present everywhere. The practice, this method of practicing is that we visualize God everywhere. Obviously, we don't see him, but we visualize him, and, and by faith we know that he's there, that God is gazing upon us at all times and in every place. And the method, this method can be practiced or helped along by images. Obviously, if you, in, if you have a, a crucifix at home, that, that immediately reminds you, okay, God, God is present to me. Or you might have uh, a picture of the holy face you carry around with you to remind you. Or you might, you might wear a cross around your neck to remind you that God is present. The second method is that of interior recollection. And it requires that one lives uh, in awareness of God's presence interiorly in the soul. And particularly if you're in a state of grace, um, if you don't remember anything of the sermon, remember this point, that God, uh, when you're in a state of grace, He dwells, the Trinity dwells in our souls. And so this method of interior recollection is that we look within ourselves, because if we are in a state of grace, we know God's here, and therefore if God's here, then 
um, what, what more could we ask for, really, when you think about it? You've God's presence in my soul. I want to protect the fact that he's, He is in my soul, in me. And we, we see the profound teaching of the Lord when He says in the Gospels, you know, the kingdom of, of Christ, or the kingdom of God, is within you. And this is the realization of these words when the Lord spoke these words in the Gospels. Um, so the Trinity dwells in our, in our souls there, and we, we want to protect um, and obviously avoid sin to, to drive them away. The other methods are practicing the presence of God by proposed by other writers, particularly St. Alphonsus. He says uh, to see the hand of God in one's events, one's life, whether adverse or prosperous, to see God in all creatures. You know, we look around and we see, obviously, the beautiful plains and mountains and, and beaches of Canterbury. To see God in one's superior, sometimes it's difficult, but we know that all authority comes from God. So to see one's superior, one's boss, for example. Or to see God in one's neighbor. So your neighbor is in a state of grace. God dwells in your neighbor as much as he dwells in you. I guess the beauty, the beauty of this uh, devotion is that it can be practiced by the simple child as well as the advanced contemplative and with great fruit. So let's say practice it. How, what kind of advantages that do we receive through the practice of the presence of God through this devotion? The first is that um, this practice of the presence of God reminds us to avoid even the most or the, the, the slightest deliberate fault. So if we, if we are aware that God is, is in us at all times, then we're not going to be too free to uh, want to, you know, to, 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 to do a fault or to, to, to make a deliberate fault because we are careful of our uh, behavior. And so when you think about it, if we are careful in our behavior with our superiors or those who are dignity, and lest we offend them, how much more should we be careful in God's presence? To because um, he sees not only our external actions, but he sees our internal um, thoughts. So if that's the case, how much more should we be aware of it and, and try to avoid even a slight, the slightest deliberate fault? The second point would be it impose us to do all things in the greatest um, possible perfection. So if we are aware that God is in us in our souls, and we know this in abstract. But in practice, we tend to forget that God is actually present to us, or present in our souls. So if we are aware that God is there, then we're going to do everything in our power to be as perfect as possible. We're not called to be perfect, but we are called to strive for perfection in everything that we do. <clears throat> and that's an important aspect of the practice of the presence of God. The fourth point is that it enables us to observe modesty in our behavior at all times. If, if you realize and recognize that God is present at all times and he sees everything that we do, even our, our thoughts, it's going to really kind of help us in, in the way that we uh, carry ourselves or whether we're alone or whether we're with, uh, with other people. This practice of, of recognizing and being aware of God's presence will help us really to behave well and behave um, because God sees everything that we do. And particularly those who are in the state of grace and have God dwelling in them, even more so uh, when it comes to performing these actions. And the last point, I'd like to point out, obviously there are many, but these are the main points, I think. It's um, the practice of devotion, the presence of God, increases our fortitude in the struggles of the Christian life. There are... Many times in our life where we, you know, we, we in, in, encounter struggles and trials and we, we believe and we think that we're alone, but actually we're not alone. And if we realize that if I'm in a state of grace, that God dwells in me, then th therefore I'm never alone. And so St. Bernard of Clairvaux, he says his famous words speaking about him, his time in, in his cell, he says that... Um, I know more alone when I am alone. I know more alone when I am alone. See, what he tends, what he means is that when he's alone, as in physically away from people, he's not alone because Christ dwells in him. Christ dwells in us if we are in the state of grace. 
So why should we practice this devotion to the presence of God? If properly used, this devotion will keep the soul in the spirit of prayer. So if we, if we practice at least the interior recollection of God being present to us in our souls, it leads us to an intimate union with God. And if we, if we um, simply just think, okay, God's present, and if, you know, if we, if we believe that God's present, uh, we know what He is. But if we are aware of that, then it's gonna we're gonna avoid a lot of sins that we would <clears throat> would do, or faults that we or say things, avoid saying things that we would say if we if we weren't aware of God's presence to us. I have to leave you a quote with uh, from Saint uh, Francis de Sales, and he says. Just paraphrasing, goes as, as, so far as to say that the presence of God, by interior recollection, accompanied by pious short prayers, can supply for any pious practice, but its absence cannot be remedied by any other. And thus we see St. Francis de Sales' high praise of the practice of the presence of God. Let us ask the Holy Mother for the graces to practice the presence of God, and ask her for the graces um, to lead us to her Son through the practice of this, His presence. God bless you, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.